Hi friends, so this week Creative Twitter was having this conversation tagged share your rejection. It was supposed to be like a comforting thing where all the people that we admire are like, yeah, I submitted my manuscript to 30 publishers and all of them said no and then the 31st said yes and now it's a bestseller. You know, to make you like helpful and believe in yourself. But I found it kind of unsettling. Okay, so I have a lot of issues with the way that we culturally mythologize failure, but that's a whole separate video. In fact, I already made it. You can go watch it. Here, here, yeah, no, here, this one. Okay, but back to this. The whole share your rejection narrative only kind of works if you can be like, yeah, look at me now, suckers. I did everything I wanted to do, and I didn't even need your grant money, Glenn. It doesn't so much work when you have the Gmail folder of all the grants and residencies and incubators and fellowships you applied for and you didn't get, but you don't have the exhale. The whole, and then I made it part. You know who I share my rejections with? my journal, where I can be as petulant and gloomy as I want to. But I was trying to see if I had any stories that fit the formula we're looking for. The fall seven time stand up eight genre, the self-made man memoir archetype. So I went back to middle school and I found her sitting on vinyl flooring wearing jazz pants. I had just finished leaping and turning and running 32 count combinations with a couple dozen other eighth graders auditioning for our studio's junior dance company. We were at that age where every single school day felt like an audition to be liked, to be accepted, to be cool, to fit in. And here it was materialized. Because to be in company meant that you were one of the strongest dancers. You got to be in all the best routines and you get to compete, which is what all of us really wanted. That meant you were really cool. But I still had crooked glasses and a middle part. I hadn't even quite figured out not to brush curly hair yet, so my ponytail stuck out like the tail of a squirrel coming out of my head. As we were dismissed from auditions, we all crowded around the window in the hallway that looked into the studio to watch the girls in the senior company dance. One day we'd be like them. We'd figure out how to move our bodies as if they weren't apologies. But until then, we had to wait. It took almost a week to get the letter in the mail. It was printed on computer paper in a standard flimsy envelope, but it still felt like the most momentous piece of mail I'd ever gotten in my life. I took it straight to my room, which was humid and hazy with afternoon sun, and I ripped it open and scanned it for words like accepted, pleased, welcome, or congratulations. But instead, I found understudy. It didn't mean I was out, but I started heaving sobs because being an understudy meant that I could still perform in the recital with the rest of the company, but in the back row, but I couldn't dance in competitions. And that was the whole shiny halo on being in company in the first place. At our first practice, we got the speech about the level we were expected to work at now. We should all be trying to dance as hard as the best girl in the room, and if we thought we were the best, we should be making damn sure that nobody was coming for our crown. Then the understudies got singled out so that everyone could understand why we would be performing with them sometimes and not others. All three of us, scrawny and spectacled, gawky limbs piled over each other and slurping from plastic water bottles, while we listened to our teacher explain as gently as possibly could be explained that we can't compete because we're not quite good enough. The thing is, she was right. I had spent the last handful of years at dance class phoning it in. Like we got these burned CDs of our recital music so that we could practice at home, but I never practiced. And in fact, even in class, I took every water break I could possibly take to avoid having to work as hard. But then recital time came around and I got a costume and an audience and I turned on all that energy I should have been bringing to the rest of my classes, but even that couldn't make up for the fact that I'd been half-assing it up to that point. And it finally stuck with me. So I started picking out the best girls in class, watching Becca and Camille and Kirby and trying to leap like they could leap or hold my arms like they held their arms or stretch as far as they could stretch. And I started getting better. By the end of the year, I was promoted to full company. By the next year, we were rehearsing in the weeks leading up to a competition, and my teacher was trying to motivate us, get us all to be a little bit better. She gave us a speech about trying to dance as hard as the best girl in class. She told us that we couldn't give 50% and expect to perform at 100. And then she said, Taylor. Yeah? What was your role in company last year? I was an understudy. Where are you dancing this year? In the front row. In the front row. That's what happens when you work hard. And like, that's the kind of energy I'm trying to have creatively right now because I was reading the Share Your Rejection 
tag and it sort of treated rejection like a numbers game. Like it's not always fair, it's not always about you, but if you try enough times, inevitably you will eventually succeed. And I think, yeah, that's sometimes true. That's what I try to remind myself in my head whenever I get a rejection email, that it doesn't mean that I personally, as a person, am not good enough. But I don't know, sometimes it is about me. Sometimes I'm putting in 50 and expecting to get 100 back and I'm not all the way ready for the front row. Or probably if I want to be a little more charitable to myself and not get into capitalist bootstraps territory, it's that I have a full-time job. So I can't be giving 100 to my side projects and it's just gonna take me a little longer. And someday I'm gonna tell you one of those if they could see me now stories and you're gonna roll your eyes and you're gonna say, Taylor, those hashtags let people self-select for a specific, type of story because the people who are just out here trying and not succeeding, they don't get the retweets. So we don't see those stories and we only ever hear about people going from understudy to the front row. And you'll be right, which is why I'm telling you I'm not there yet. I'm not making any big exciting moves. I don't even have swipe up on Instagram stories kind of clout yet, but I'm just out here making videos about every other week for about a thousand people at a time. And that still matters a whole lot to me. Share your rejections in the comments, even if they don't have a gratifying twist ending. If you like this video, share it with someone who you think might like it. This is a word of mouth kind of channel, so that really helps so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.